Welcome to MathsMaster.org. We're going to have a look at the graph transformation y is equal to a times f of x of the function f of x. In this lesson we're going to look at taking a function of x, so a function in terms of x, and then multiplying that by a constant term which I'm going to use a to stand for. And then you take that new function a times f of x and you plot it on a graph and you look at what happens to the graph when the value for a changes. So as a changes what happens to the graph? That's what we're going to be looking at in this lesson. We're going to be looking at two functions of x in particular. The first function of x is x squared and so if we do the transformation on that a f of x or a times f of x we'll be looking at the function a times x squared. And you can see here I've put the x squared in brackets to clearly show that we do the x squared calculation first and then we multiply it by a. And that's how we find the transformation a f of x. The second function we're going to be looking at is the function sine x, so the trigonometric function sine x. If we want to look at the transformation of that a times f of x, we'll be looking at the graph of a times sine x. You can see I've put the sine x in brackets to clearly show that we do the sine x calculation first and then we're multiplying that by a. So let's start off by looking at the function x squared and the transformation of that to give us a times f of x or a times x squared. So here's the graph y is equal to x squared and let's have a look at what happens if we change the value of a. So a is the number in front of x squared, so the coefficient of x squared if you like. Let's have a look at what happens if we change the number. You'll see if I make a larger, a larger positive number, the graph seems to be getting taller. If I make a smaller, the graph seems to be getting shorter. It seems to be being stretched along the y-axis, but it's getting shorter. And then if I make a negative, it's still being stretched along the y-axis, but in the opposite direction. It's actually reflected about the x-axis now, going down. And as we make a more positive, it gets stretched along the y-axis, back where to, to where we started. OK, the value for a actually tells us the scaling factor. It tells us how much the graph is stretched along the y-axis. So let's have a look at where x is equal to 4. At this point, y is equal to 16. If you think about it, we've got the graph of y is equal to x squared. So when x is equal to 4, 4 squared, or 4 times 4, is 16. And that's why y is 16 at that point. Now, if we change a from 1 to 2, what it tells us is we need to scale all those values by a factor of 2. So rather than y being equal to 16, we'd expect it to be equal to 32. So let's have a look. When a is equal to 2, y is now 32 rather than 16 because 2 lots of 16 are 32. 3 lots of 16 are 48. So when a was equal to 3, we'd expect y to be equal to 3 times 16, well 48, which it is. OK, so the a value actually gives you the scaling factor along the y-axis, how, how much you need to stretch the graph along the y-axis. If we move a to 0 0.5, what that tells us is that we would we have a scaling factor of uh, the half, or 0 0.5. So rather than what, uh, x equals 4, y being equal to 16, we'd expect it to be equal to 8, or half of 16. So let's have a look at that. So a is equal to a half, and x is 4, y is equal to 8, half of 16. If a is equal to 0, 
the graph is just all along the x-axis, or the line y equals zero. Why? Well, if you think about it, uh, for any value of x, it doesn't matter what it is, if you then go and times that by zero, the answer will always be zero, no matter what value of x you choose. OK, let's have a look now at what happens when we make um, a negative. You can see that um, we said it's reflected in the x-axis, it's going down, but let's have a look at some actual values. So we'll go back to y equals x, and go back to that point where x is equal to 4, y is 16. If we change a from 1 to minus 1, you'll see that the y value, rather than being 16, is now negative 16, minus 16. So it is an exact reflection about the x-axis. When we had y is 2x squared, when a was 2, uh, the y value at x equals 4 was 32. If I change a from 2 to minus 2, the y value has gone from 32 to negative 32. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that uh, the transformation a times f of x uh, gives us a stretch along the y-axis. The, the a number, the a value, gives us the scaling factor. that we, It tells us how much we have to stretch the values along the y-axis. And if a is negative, then we simply need to reflect the graph in the x-axis. All the values that were positive uh, now become equal, but in the negative sense. OK, let's have a look at our second function of x now, which is sine x. We're going to have a look at uh, the transformation a, f of x, or a times f of x. Uh, which for our function will be a times sine x. OK, so here's the graph of y equals sine x. And if we change the value of a, the value that we're multiplying sine x by, um, let's have a look at what happens. It's exactly the same principles as before. Changing the value of a stretches the graph along the y-axis, and the number for a, the value of a actually tells us the scaling factor. So let's have a look at the point where um, x is equal to 90 degrees. That's the maximum point on the graph. And at that point, y is equal to 1. <clears throat> if I scale that point uh, by a factor of 2, so I scale the graph by a factor of 2, a is equal to 2, I would expect uh, at 90 degrees, x is equal to 90 degrees, rather than y to be equal to 1, I'd expect it to be equal to 2, twice as large as that, which it is. 3 times as large as that, y would be equal to 3. So you can clearly see here on this graph, I think, how uh, the a value gives you the scaling factor for this function. Again, if a is equal to 0, then the graph is just completely along the uh, y equals 0 line, or the x-axis, because any number times 0 is equal to 0. And similarly, so if we uh, make a negative, you can see that the graph is actually a reflection through the x-axis. So here's the graph of y equals 1 times sine x. Here's the graph of y equals minus 1 times sine x. It's an absolute uh, reflection through the x-axis. At y equals 2 sine x at 90 degrees, y was equal to 2, the top of the graph. If I change a from 2 to minus 2, you'll see the peak of the graph, uh, uh, sorry, the point of the graph at x equals 90 degrees has moved from 2 down to minus 2. It's an exact reflection. So just to recap, we've had a look at what the graph transformation a times f of x, or a f of x, has on the function f of x. It stretches the graph along the y-axis, along the vertical axis, um, by a scale factor of a, a itself. So if a is equal to 2, the graph is stretched along the vertical axis by a factor of 2. 
If A is negative, we need to remember that it's actually just reflected in the x-axis. That was the graph transformation y is equal to a times f of x of the function f of x. If you want to see some more great maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.